Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, November 17th, 2016. I got some things for you on crude. The markets are very slow this morning, so we can do a little bit of chart reviewing. Uh, this is the weekly, and you can see last year we were holding price at 120, flush down all the way to the low of 34.23, sort of been bouncing back up, but now we're walking an ascending triangle in a down volatility and the volatility level is holding at 55.61 but when what was most notable is we had that five plus something million barrel of op subsidized OPEC import inventory that came in the other week that is causing our storage to get over um, saturated with inventory um, instead of the market plummeting, there was a really big player holding this price up and sent it slamming back up. So um, this price is being supported. So I would expect the middle of this uh, trend line of the um, ascending triangle to get hit. So that's my upside target for this week, 48.39. And... Um, in case you don't buy into my volatility levels, let me just remind you real quickly on the E-mini, what's been holding that market up uh, since August. And I do think this one's going to get broken out to the upside, but um, right now we're just testing it gently to the top. But as far as the crude, we are in ascending triangle now, bona fide. Do expect the middle, the apex to get hit and um, tight ranges until we break above or below on the crude market. Uh, taking it to an intraday level, I'll show you another chart that I use. This is my Alto Gummy uh, volume profile. It's a split profile on an RTH session only. I take the Globex out. So you can see on the RTH session that we've also been in a nice downtrend uh, on the 30-minute uh, chart. Very nice 30-minute downtrend. And we are testing that 200. Uh, we did break our naked VPOC up here at 4610 on the Globex. We've got a naked VPOC sitting down here at 4286. Uh, but we do have this gap gap and go. So like I said, I would be expecting this to break out, hit the middle of that um, ascending triangle. Uh, 48.53 is my target to get to this week, despite that um, inventory. But we still haven't cleared this area on my um, RTH session. So um, the downside of this, if it comes back inside the range to test the bottom, that would be around 45.77. That is the RTH session uh, VWAP, 45.77. And I'd like to see price stay above 45.77 for a long. And where that is on my chart, that's right here at the close. So that's why I think this is a good level. Um, to keep price, keep me in line of where my line in the sand is for um, longs versus getting back down in here. That would be a, mean a failure and um, likely to come back down and just test this trend line again and then bounce back up. This trend line is being held up. Um, there's no doubt in my mind. There were some big big ass buyers coming down here yesterday on the EIA report and they picked crude up and slammed it up. I mean, we were sitting here looking at each other going, did you just see that? And they just whacked it up. Um, did not allow this to get down. So um, this was yesterday right here. This is where they pick the market up and just whoosh, pushed it up. So it's coming back down to test the area and now coming back up. So 
very much a bullish consolidation pattern. I would expect this to break out 45.77, um, which is on my chart for a retest, and then go if it doesn't just break out and run, uh, which it could also. So de definitely bullish. Um, look at my signals on the shorter time frame chart, how I take these. Uh, once I get a trade plan, I try to find a volatility level that is working, that's holding price, and then simply I wait for my pullbacks, and I get in on my pullbacks. Initially, I will set a one-on-one -on -one as a target, and I will trail the second one. So like I'll put four contracts on a one-to-one -one, and then I'll trail one, my fifth contract, behind the um, super trend band. So that's been working for me as a strategy. I can usually always get my one-on-one -on -one, um, when the condition exists. Of course you don't trade long when the condition does not exist. Uh, you wait Second mouse gets the cheese, remember? Wait for your condition to get in there and then get in on an inflection or a reversal. So first you have to get through the volatility band really uh, to take, take that long. And um, that's about it. Uh, you can change your um, data up or down. Uh, if you would like to get in on a faster trade, you can walk it down a little bit and get in uh, much quicker and pick these off, you know, very nicely, very nice trades. Just sit here and pick these off. Um, you know, if you want to put a 10 tick, I mean, excuse me, a 10 contract on it, um, because these, if you go back and do your research on these, very high probability trades uh, once the direction you get your volatility band set and your direction. And um, as we all know, um, you don't have to trade for a mile to be successful in trading. You just have to understand when your condition is there. I give you everything possible to recognize when that is occurring, momentum above zero, your volatility band, check, momentum, check, pullback, check, check, check. Do I have to ask you or invite you to take the trade? Nope, take the trade and take your money. Okay, that's what we want right there. Boom, boom, you're done. That's really all you have to trade. You're done for the day. And um, that's what we want. So simple. Keep it simple, right? And we will see what happens. Of course, we're salmon swimming upstream in a downstreaming market, right? So we have to recognize that too. That's another reason not to sit there and try to trade for 50 pips, you know or ticks, hello, um, we're in a downtrend, a major downtrend, so wait for the breakout, and we will um, chat at you soon, thank you so much, y'all have a good day.